watch, you hold it, you, you don't clamp, you just hold back, do the kick, you gotta be kneeing. Okay, no knees to the face, no elbows. Okay, you understand that, you just knee to the body. Okay, you kick inside and outside the leg. You guys have any questions? Okay, obey my commands at all times, listen to me when I tell you to break, break. All right, touch gloves, go back to your corner, wait for the corner, so I call you out. Muay Thai action now on the deuce. ISKA North American title on the line in the super welterweight division. That is Fernando Iguado from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Black trunks with the white stripe. He will be taking on Alex Gong in the all black trunks and the ankle wraps. He's from San Francisco, California. We are scheduled for five three-minute rounds. And down goes Iguado. Referee Chuck Simonini is going to give him an eight count less than five seconds into this battle. Chuck Simonini thought he went down for the force of the blow. Iguado is having his troubles early on. Gong is relentless. because he says he strikes quickly and devastatingly. And so far, that's what we've seen in round one. Certainly the stronger of the, of the two with leg kicks. And not giving Iguado a chance to get anything. Iguado seemingly lackadaisical as he takes his punishment. skills is just not doing much in there. All the punches from Iguado. These will be three-minute rounds, unlike most kickboxing two-minute rounds. Well, these Muay Thai rules allow kicks to the inside and outside of the leg, both above and below the knee. Notice Gong is aiming for a spot, a, a nerve spot, just about two inches above the knee and the outside of the thigh. Iguado is raising his knees to try to block him. California. Mike, the fury of the Muay Thai action has to be so dangerous to time. If you're coming out like Gong and going full tilt, what's that going to leave for later on? Well, he seems to be in good condition so far. We don't even see him breathing hard yet. And the Muay Thai fighters are like that. We've seen it in Thailand and we've seen the well trained ones here. His leg kicks are just relentless. I don't know how Iguado is going to hold up from these leg kicks if this continues. That's one of the few kicks that Gong has thrown above the waist. That's the one that put Iguado down. This is the well-timed leg kick, went right underneath uh, Iguado's front leg kick and took the back leg out. Totally diffused any power from Iguado's kick. Ready now for second round action. Boy, Ty, the 
SKA Superweight North American title on the line. Now the question is, did Fernando Iguado learn how to keep Alex Gong at a distance? the pure Muay Thai style from Alex Gong. Kachat M. Lung, his trainer, comes from Thailand. I'm very interested in the demeanor that Aguado is showing. It seems very laid back. He just resigned to let Gong try to kick himself out. Very stoic look on his face. I'm sure his corner, Bill Packer and Ken Harding, have told him he's got to pick up his face. Continues to take the punishment, but it certainly doesn't show in his facial expressions. It's going to show in his face for those marks. Well, Iguardo just threw his best leg kick of the fight, but he failed to follow up and is now being pounded by Gong. Nice spin hook kick by Iguardo. Missed the mark. seems determined to fight his pace of fight no matter what his opponent is doing. We'll seldom see a pure multi fighter go up to the head with a spinning kick. stopped fighting and was kneeling on the ground and Gong shows his respect to his opponent. We're only in the second round, Juan. Eduardo's legs are massive welts, both on the shin, the thigh, the sides of the legs. Chuck Simonini, the referee, just a quick question right there to Eduardo. You okay? Good kick from Eduardo. Spin hook landed, but no damage. Mouthpiece of Iguado once again knocked to the canvas. Okay, whoa, 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 quick out of Step out, step out. Step back. Both fighters going at each other helter skelter. Iguado certainly delivers his techniques like he's got a plan in mind. Final seconds of round two of this scheduled five-round Muay Thai fight on the deuce. Just about set for round three. Let's take a look at some action from the previous round. Mike Sawyer. This is Alex Gong on the attack, and for a change, he came in with his hands first, then went to the legs. This was the kick he was warned for. After Iguado was on the canvas, he threw a left leg roundhouse kick. Although it didn't land, he was warned. Here you can see the welts all over the legs of Iguado. And that's the price the Muay Thai fighters pay. And the, the uh, and another roundhouse kick by Alex Gong into those legs. If you're going to uh, fight with the legs, you're going to have to block with the legs too, and you're not going to walk away without a few welts. And there in the corner of Alex F-14 Gong and the welts and the red legs of Fernando Aguado show the damage that he has both taken and dished out. Certainly they're going to take some punishment when you perform the kick as well, Mike. Well, the, the mark of a fighter that has fought Muay Thai for a long time and has trained in the pure style is he'll get welts on his legs, he'll get some bruises, but he won't have the, the big contusions and hematomas on the shin bone that we see on uh, Fernando Iguado. Yeah, that switch right up the middle of his right hand. All right, let's take a look at a nice roundhouse from the previous round. This is Iguado with a spinning hook kick that just glanced off the shoulder, made contact with the head of Alex Gong with other damage. It's, it's kind of puzzling that Iguado continues to try to throw that spinning hook kick. He may have had some success in previous bouts and knocked the opponents out, but it's not going to happen with Alex Gong. Iguado needs to get a more basic game plan going, something that gets him inside where he seems to be. 
throughout the arena. The arena. Good combination by Iguana. He gets aggressive. He may be able to do more. Well, he could be the Thai fighter who really takes it easy the first couple of rounds and then see them slowly coming on in the final few rounds of this five-round bout. It's possible. He may have been a little afraid of those five three-minute rounds and wanted to pace himself early. Demo! Demo, demo! He now handing out punishment to Alex Gaughan. is going to warn Alex Gaughan for grabbing the leg. He cannot do that. Screen with the white stripe on his trunks going against Alex Gong. All black trunks, the F 14. That was blocked. There you go. Top of Gong's head caught the chin of Iguano. That was a tremendous head. trying to twist Iguato into position for a knee strike. Good series for Iguato. He has to do more of that to get back in this fight. of the legs of Iguato. He did hurt Iguato a few times with his kicks. He's let off in the last round. I think that's a mistake on Gong's part. If there's any part of Iguato's body that is in bad shape right now, it's his legs. That's what Gong should go for. We've got more Muay Thai action on the deuce. Come on back to the ISKA fights. For round number four, Fernando Iguato showed some signs of life and signs of what he has to do to win this fight, Mike. Yeah, and he came on much more aggressively in that round. This is a, a three-kick combination followed by a side kick and a, a spinning oh, side kick. He just missed the mark. I'm gonna tell John grabbed the hold of him. Didn't work. Here's the headbutt. Now, this headbutt is one of the worst I've seen in a while. Amazingly... No. Fernando Iguado shook that off. Almost used his chin and jaw as a shock absorber for that. Didn't <laughs> quite that picture on the point. I think so. I don't think Alex Gong meant, meant to do that. Uh, Iguado just didn't move back when he came in. And we're just about set to go for fourth round action. Iguado comes in at 40 and 3. Gong at 11 and 2. Gone. Attempted flying kick by Iguada that never materialized. Balance, not a knockdown. Good combination by Iguada. Don't know if Gong is tiring or just he's confused. Let go, let go, let go. He's not maintaining that aggressor role we had earlier. shoulders after those great punches from Alex Gong. Five punch combination by Gong. Two of them landed well. All right, nickel, 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 nickel. Chuck 
Simeonini warns Fernando Iguano of throwing the elbow, which is not allowed. Defensive posture taken in that exchange by Iguado. I would guess Iguado's legs are hurting him very badly. To be on his, the balls of his feet, to be up on his toes, hurts those legs more, so he's staying flat. So early on in that fourth round, Alex Gong seemed to be taking a rest. Iguado was not forcing the action either, but then Alex Gong showed that he means business. Maybe just a bit of a rest period, but they're the legs of Fernando Iguado. Iguado getting a pep talk. He's trying to get fired up, or Gong trying to get fired up. Iguado never really was one to get fired up, even from the first round. He was the one who seemed to be taking it calmly, taking it in stride. Maybe that has saved him something for this final round. Well, his trainer, Bill Packer, is one of the most savvy trainers in the sport, and he certainly knows Iguado must be behind on points. It's a three-minute round, but still it's scored on the modified 10-point plus system. He needs at least one knockdown in this round. Iguado needs to knock Gong down at least once to help even up those points. This is the final round of this five-round bout of the ISKA North American Super Welterweight title. Alex Gong taking it to Iguano. Chuck Simonini steps in, puts Gong in a neutral corner, and gives eight to Iguano. Iguano saying he wasn't hurt, but anytime a fighter doesn't defend himself, the referee will step in and give an eight count. But that has been Iguano's style for a lot of the fight, too. He needs the knockdown. Good knee strike by Alex going to the body. Oh, a straight left. Devastating straight left hand by Alex Gong. There's no way the Guado doesn't feel that. Stoic look on his face is still there, but his body's not moving like it was. Spinning hook kick to the legs that time for Iguado, still unable to bring Alex Gong down. Guado lost his mouthpiece. Third time his mouthpiece has come out. Chuck Simonini's not stopping the fight as quickly as he did before. Now he does step in and calls timeout. Meanwhile, Alex Gong goes over, pumps up the crowd, try to pump him up. Now they're ready to resume this final round.
like the fighter who desperately is going for the knockdown. He seems to have a plan in mind the whole way, and he's sticking to it. Followed it to the T. And that is the end. Two courageous fighters in this Muay Thai bout. Alex Gong from San Francisco, California, seems to think it is all his. Mike, that was furious. We it, it built slowly too. Iguado showed early on that he was a fighter with a plan, and he seemed to stick to it all the way. Action. Well, this is final round action. You'll see Gong go into his hands as a lead, no kicks in front of it. As we said, he may be having some trouble with his own legs. Those flurries are just fast and furious, and Chuck Simonini did the right thing by stepping in for that standing eight. This is in the corner, and again, you'll see the straight left hand lead find its target seems almost like Iguado doesn't even see it coming. One more look at that. Different angle. You'll see it just come straight down the middle. Iguado with his hands low. Very good planning and timing by Gong. He waits for just the right moment, slips it right down the middle. Alex Gong with a very impressive performance. Courageous. Right now, this title is vacant. The decision will give the winner the ISKA North American Super Welterweight title belt. Look the guys in Man Hell have them. Strong court trainers. This is easy compared to the training they put me through. <laughs> and that's the way it should be, huh? Yes, it is. So Fernando Iguado, he too waits for the decision. Let's go up to the ring announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, after five grueling rounds, it's a shame someone has to lose this fight. But before I announce the decision, let's hear it for both of these two young men. And to the scorecards we go. By scores of 49-44, 49-46, and 49-45, the winner out of the blue corner from San Francisco, Alex. Decision winner over Fernando Iguado. And let's go up to the ring and Mike Sawyer. Alex, it seemed your game plan worked for you tonight. You started with the legs early, went to the hands later on. Is that how you planned it? Yeah, well, we want to break down his guard, see how he reacts to pain and, you know, taking the damage. And then we kind of assess the opponent for the first, second, third round. Then we just push on and see if we can finish it early. Uh, he's a tough opponent. And uh, you can take the punches, you can take the pain in the legs. And I got to give it for him for that. But, uh, you know, we trained a little harder, probably, it looks like, and uh, we pulled through. Was he, the kind of, was he the kind of fighter that you usually face? He seemed like he wasn't a classic Muay Thai fighter. Was it, did it throw you off at all, or was it all to his disadvantage? A little bit, because the game, the structure of the game is a little bit different when you fight an unorthodox fighter. If you notice his movement's a little bit awkward, and he's not so standoffish. So it changes our game plan a little bit. But it's a small ring, so we couldn't run around too much. So we were able to cut the ring off and uh, put Muay Thai into work, and it was a fun game. And, uh, this right for us is great. Did, did he ever hurt you during the fight at all? No, I hurt myself. I kept kicking his elbow, and then I kicked his ankle a few times, his knee. You know, and that usually is uh, my my uh, my fault is of the game. Is that is that why you went more to your hands later on? Uh, no, because he was starting to get worried about my legs. So you know, I, I landed uh, some hands. I had a hand injury, and I hadn't been able to box the last six weeks, so my hands weren't very sharp. So I was only throwing two and three punch combinations, but uh. You know, it all worked out in the long run. I could see that towards the end of the fourth round. Fifth round, I kind of cruised through it. 
Congratulations, Alex. Congratulations on your title. Back to Lon McCarron. A great, entertaining Muay Thai fight. We'll be back with more ISKA kickboxing on the deuce in just a moment.